Hi Trojans. Thanks for joining our Trojan Travel Webinar Cruise with USC. During today's, I'm sorry, during today's session, your cameras are off, so feel free to relax and enjoy your time with us. As you saw, this session is being recorded and it will be posted on our Trojan Travel website next week. Questions are welcome and can be asked using the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. If you click on that, you'll see a dialog box open on the side of your screen and then you can type your questions in there. We'll be sure to do our best to answer all of those at the end of the session. Today I am joining you from the deck of Oceana's Riviera. Okay, not really, but I really wish I was and I'm ready to get back on board. We've had such fun this week exploring all of the different types of tours offered by the USC Alumni Association. And we're finishing up today with wonderful updates about cruising. Trojan Travel has been offering educational tours to alumni and friends of USC for almost 50 years. We are a division of the USC Alumni Association and love sharing all of these unique and special ways to explore the world and we love sharing new places and discoveries together. The memories that are made on these tours are just really second to none. Participating today, we have a fabulous group of viewers. Some of you are past travelers. Some of you are Trojans who are interested in learning more about Trojan travel. And some of you are travel planner colleagues from across the country. Thank you all for joining us today. It's no surprise that this year travel has faced unique challenges and the world as we know has virtually been shut down since the middle of March. It's hard to believe a year without travel, but we're pretty close to that. The travel industry has faced challenges before and they're ready to get back after this one too. We are so grateful during these times that we work with tour operators and providers who are just the finest in the business. And we are so excited to begin to travel again and have groups go out. Today, we have two wonderful guests joining us. First of all, it is a pleasure to welcome and introduce Nikki Upshaw, Senior Vice President of Sales for Oceana Cruises. Nikki is a very busy gal and we are so lucky to have her join us today. I've really enjoyed working with Nikki and other senior executives as a member of Oceana's Alumni Council. We've had monthly Zooms with them throughout all of the pandemic, and we usually get together at least once a year in person. Nikki has quite a full schedule, but she is here for a little brief welcome coming to us from Miami. In her role, Nikki leads and manages a talented team and is responsible for trade sales in all of the Americas. She manages the onboard sales team and oversees sales and engagement. Nikki is recognized as a highly motivated and top performing sales and marketing executive, as well as an innovative, creative and results oriented leader with strategic and global experience. She leverages her business relationships with luxury brands and travel purveyors to achieve top results. As a member of Oceana's senior management, she also contributes and shapes sales and marketing strategies for the line to ensure their continued success. Prior to joining Oceana, she was Senior Vice President Sales and Marketing for The World, the largest privately owned residential yacht on earth. She's also held senior level positions with ultra luxury cruise companies such as Royal Viking Line, Cunard Line, and the Yachts of Seaborn. We are so lucky to have her join us today, and I'd like to join, I will give her all of our welcome as we pass the camera over to her. Thanks, Nikki, for joining us. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate the opportunity so very much. And hello to all of you, all the Trojans that are listening um, and watching. Um, and wow, what, what an introduction, Linda. I kind of forgot I had done some of those things. So here I am aboard Riviera in the owner suite. Okay, I am not. I wish I was. But uh, I thought that I selected this photo to hopefully have us all dream and uh, you know, really stay in touch with uh, hopefully traveling very soon again. So in uh, the few minutes I'm gonna be spending with you, I thought to just update you on a few highlights. Um, you know, as Linda said, this is a year like no other in so many ways, but as well, you know, as far as travel is concerned and 
we are at the ready to be able to sail again. And what I mean by that is that we have been diligently working on our healthy sail panel protocols. And I know that um, Mike, who will be speaking shortly, will take you through some of those details. But uppermost in our mind at Oceana Cruises has been to ensure that we come out with the protocols, the recommendations we've made to keep our guests, our crew, and the destinations we visit safe. And that's uh, really what, what has to be a priority for anyone that wants to you know, hit the high seas again. And so we feel that, um, as if you've been following the news, that we're going to have an update very soon. Um, again, soon might still be a big term, but whereas months ago, I think it was quite unclear, now in the next few weeks, we truly feel like we're getting closer to uh, some of the CDC protocols being approved, um, potentially no sale orders being lifted. But I will share with you that our chairman, Frank Del Rio, and again, if you follow some of the, um, you know, the, uh, the press that's been going on with the cruise industry and our chairman, Frank Del Rio, has been very vocal that even when those happen, even when we get those green light approvals, we will not set sail until we know that we can deliver on every single one of our health and safety protocols. So it doesn't mean that the minute that green light is given or those approvals are given, we'll be in the water. We're gonna take our time, we're gonna do it right. And that's our commitment to each and every one of you. We also know that we'll have to phase in our ships. So although I wish that all six of our beautiful ships could be sailing again right away, it'll take some time to get our crew on board, to get them trained. Again, back to it being critical for us to make sure that we can take good care of you when you come. And of course, the testing that will be required all the way around. Um, so it'll be a phased approach, but we, at this moment, and of course, no one has that proverbial crystal ball, but at this moment, we do feel that um, come 2021, we'll be sailing again to the beautiful destinations around the world. Um, I also work closely with CLIA. I'm the vice chairman of the um, Trade Relations Committee. And also with CLIA, it's important for us, not just as each individual brand, but as an industry, that we have some common protocols. So we're working on, on that with them very, very closely. Um, and so more to come there, but certainly one of the biggest announcements recently was that all CLIA lines will require 100% testing from all, all guests that come on board. So, you know, Linda and I have talked about it in the monthly calls she mentioned, and also, um, of course, with, uh, with Go Next, which is a fantastic partner that works together with, uh, with Linda and everyone to get you um, on board and great programs with Oceana, that who knew we'd be talking this much about health and safety if you'd asked us this a year ago, but it's paramount. Beyond that, I will say that we are excited that there is still such great interest in our Oceana cruises for next year. And we're going to, of course, launch pretty soon our 2022 um, summer season. It actually launches on November 11th. And so working on fantastic programs with, uh, with Linda and everyone to, again, share the world with you. We, we cannot wait. So um, I think that hits most of the high notes here. Uh, I think the biggest one would be if I could tell you the exact date we'd be sailing, which I can't quite do it yet. But please, please, please stay safe, stay positive and look out uh, for new ways to be able to experience the world aboard, aboard one of our beautiful ships quite soon. Thank you, Nikki. It was so great to hear from you. Um, since we're both on board the same ship, I should come meet you for um, a cocktail <laughs> soon. Because... I'd love it. Oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> since, since we both happen to be in one of, in our favorite places. So um, that's I'll... right. I, I will look forward to seeing you again soon and not the virtual world. So thank That's you for right. joining us. You're I know very you welcome. have a busy day. So we're going to say goodbye and say thank you. Thank um, you very much. It, it will be in touch and um, we can't wait to be on board your beautiful ships again soon. Thank you. See you soon. Now I'd like to introduce Mike Maglioni, Senior Director of Business Development for Go Next. Nikki mentioned that GoNext is a large partner with Oceana, and we look forward to hearing from him. Mike has been in the alumni travel industry since 1987, the last 10 years of which have been representing GoNext. Mike works with university alumni associations throughout the United States and Canada, and has enjoyed presenting travel programs to every continent. He's actually been to most of those because he has traveled to over 110 countries. 
Um, the beauty I have found is so many of my colleagues have been in this business for a very long time, and we really all do share the love of travel. So Mike is here to share more about our 2021 cruises being offered with Go Next on Oceana, as well as some other ships. So welcome, Mike. We're so glad to have you. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate it. It's been a great opportunity to have the opportunity to work with the USC over the years. And uh, thank you to Nikki for that great introduction. Uh, Go Next has uh, uh, had the pleasure of, of uh, working with Oceana for almost 10 years now as the exclusive providers of blue water cruising throughout uh, the world and to the uh, alumni market. And we're very uh, excited to talk and discuss the 2021 programs. As I mentioned, Go Next will be celebrating our 50th anniversary in uh, 2021, and, or it's 2022 actually. And uh, we're very excited to see that uh, USC has chosen some great trips that I think will uh, have the uh, appeal to many of your travelers. As uh, Linda mentioned, we work with about 100, over 150 universities throughout the US and Canada, exclusively with university alumni associations. We specialize in blue water cruising, domestic cruising to the, through the US, uh, the Mississippi, the Columbia rivers, the Great Lakes and the Eastern and uh, the uh, North uh, Western seaboards. In addition, we employ some of the top staff in, in, in travel experts in the world. Our international program managers are uh, well known to our passengers um, as their uh, experience of 25, 30 years really shines through when they're interacting with uh, our alumni members. When you join us on a trip, you actually will be interacting with our staff on board. And our staff also works very well with all the uh, uh, crew and, and staff on board our vessels. Each of our ships will have an Oceana or go next um, hospitality desk right next to the Oceana concierge desk. And your members are always interact with our staff. On board, we conduct special group events, including welcome receptions for uh, all the groups in addition to private receptions for each group. We host dinners with, with the hosts and lectures separately for the, for the USC group, and then we'll have a night when we dedicate to a group photo. We ensure that all your members travel together uh, when you're uh, on the shore excursions, as well as lectures, trivia, and, and activities on board the ship. We're always building and working towards building that group dynamic within the USC group. Obviously, in this day and age, it's really important to have trusted cruise partners and we really feel comfortable with uh, working with all our partners as they endeavor to uh, create the healthy safe, uh, health and wellness standards that Nikki referred to. Whether it be Oceana, our American Queen, Victory, uh, all these vessels are really working hard to ensure your safety once we um, reemerge from uh, the uh, COVID situation. Specifically, the Healthy Sail Panel that Nikki referred to has established some protocols that they've submitted to the CDC. And most cities will probably be industry accepted protocols as Nikki uh, mentioned. They include te touchless temperature taking and rapid testing and embarkation, the utilization of HEPA filters in all staterooms and public areas, electrostatic defogging in all public areas and staterooms, uh, enhanced medical facilities and quarantine areas on board ships, public uh, health officers in addition to the medical crew on ships, touchless food service, which Oceana has employed uh, throughout uh, most of the time here in the last several years. Uh, anyway, so a lot of these things they've already been employing. Obviously, social distancing, masks where, where necessary, uh, 
deviating from certain ports and might have some issues, which uh, obviously they, we do uh, when, when there's any safety issues as well. Um, and overall, obviously we'll have to have some stringent rules when it comes to shoreside excursions, motor coach size, group size, et cetera. So I think there really has been a great effort. In fact, this, this report which, uh, Nikki referred to is a 67 page report submitted to the uh, CDC on September 30th. And uh, it's our hope in the, in the next 30 days they will have seen the work put into this that will uh, certainly uh, ensure that cruising be one of the safest modes of travel in the world. In 2021, we'll be uh, operating, sponsoring several programs for USC Trojan travelers, running the gamut from domestic programs on the Southeast seaboard, the Great Lakes, Pacific Northwest and Alaska, international programs of the Middle East, Panama Canal and the Mediterranean. Our first program is Middle East Meandering, departing February 27th through March 10th, 2021. This is a round trip Dubai program, a 12 day, 10 night itinerary on the Serena, a 685 passenger vessel. Oceana has always been voted one of the top cruise lines at sea. And in the last several years, they've also been voted the top cuisine at sea. And that's because they really dedicate a lot to the the onboard experience and the uh, onboard culinary uh, experience on all their vessels. In addition to the uh, uh, basic uh, benefits that they, they provide, they really stress the uh, onboard service and the lifelong learning aspect to your travel experience. The Serena, as I mentioned, 685 passenger vessel. Uh, she has several dining venues. This here is the Terrace Grill. Actually inside is where the buffet is, a touch of buffet where you're actually served your, your food that you request. It's a nice place to come to have breakfast, lunch or dinner in a buffet setting and a uh, little open air and a uh, beautiful time to either watch the sunrise or the sunset as well as enjoy lunch if you're heading out on a shore excursion. Also have a spa on board, obviously very popular uh, during days at sea. There's three restaurants. There's the grand dining room, which is the main dining room. It's an open seating, open from six to 9 p.m. Uh, no assigned tables, no assigned times, just go in when you'd like and sit down and, and enjoy a breakfast, lunch, or sit down dinner. We also have a, uh, two alternative restaurants that are included in the price. Uh, Toscana's, the authentic Italian restaurant, and Polo Grill, which is an um, American steakhouse. Both of those are uh, treated as restaurants where you make reservations in advance uh, and then arrive on that, on that, at that time and that day to enjoy your, your uh your dinner. In all these cases, as I mentioned, the, uh, uh, the, all the cuisine is, is cooked to ardor. They make their own butter on board. They make their own fresh croissants with, with um, uh, flour flown in from France. So again, you'll find that uh, uh, the cu cuisine is unbelievable. The specific itinerary round trip Dubai starts in Dubai. And obviously with the uh, uh, with the, the, the rapid development of this area over the last 20 years, the skyscrapers and uh, the amazing structures of Dubai really brings into uh, uh, the reality amazing things that have done in this region of the world. Visit uh, Old Dubai, uh, Sharjah, the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, and really get a feel for what this part of the world is culturally. We have an opportunity to visit Abu Dhabi and Doha, Qatar. At, at Abu Dhabi, the world's richest city, uh, boasts opulent hotels, unbelievable museums, and obviously a lot of modern architecture that um, has just been uh, created in the last 20 years. Doha, the capital of Qatar, it's the largest city, it displays a beautiful a waterfront a display of impressive towering hotels. Um, notably, uh, I.M. Pei's Museum of Islamic Art, 
which houses some of the largest collections of Islamic art in the world. We also go to Bahrain, where we visit some uh, archaeological uh, sites uh, in the Bahrain Fort, one of the country's two UNESCO heritage sites. Fujera, the only emirate uh, on the Gulf of Oman instead of the Persian Gulf. Muscat and Kassab Oman, where we'll see the Sultan's Palace, uh, the Marani Fort, visit the souks and the, and the narrow alleys and browse the bustling uh, uh, side streets. Overall, this program is uh, a very uh, popular program and it's priced very well. It's priced from $31.99, including air for major gateway cities and your choice of select shore excursions or shipboard credit. I might add, departing in February of, 20, of uh, 21, this is a program that, as Nikki alluded to, we're still hoping will operate uh, and uh, there'll be some uh, promotional opportunities that will be forthcoming here in the next 30 days. Our next pro program is called Mediterranean Fusion, a cruise from Istanbul to Barcelona departing April 7th through 18th, 2021. This is a ten, again, a 12 day, 10 night itinerary on Serena. Uh, this is a, a fascinating itinerary, traveling from Istanbul to Troy, to Kusadasi for Ephesus, Heraklion, Naples for Pompeii, Rome, Livorno, where we can visit Lucca, Florence, um, Tuscany, Monte Carlo, Provence, and Barcelona. Obviously in, in, in Istanbul, we have so many things you can see in a short period of time. The Tepapi Palace with the famous Jade Dagger, uh, Haji Sophia, the impressive Blue Mosque, the Spice Market and the Grand Bazaar. In Troy, we can uh, visit some of Turkey's best wines, enjoy some of their best wines. And Troy has a kind of an ambiance of a combination of Greek and, and Turkish um, in, in influence uh, with the whitewashed buildings and occasional minarets. Uh, there you'll have an opportunity to visit a, a 15th century uh, castle, uh, which are some of, amongst some of the countries most preserved. One of the highlights of your trip of vi visiting Ephesus in the library, see here the library of Celsus, visit the ruins of Ephesus, uh, the amphitheater, the marble roads, the mosaic sidewalks, and uh, the uh, interesting terrace houses, which are often open to, uh, to visit uh, during your excursion. But this is a fascinating location, of, obviously, where Paul uh, spoke and uh, where uh, uh, just you can, you can imagine the, what it was like back in then with the people in the, in the amphitheater, where you'll have the opportunity to sit right in the, in the same amphitheater. Heraklion uh, is our next stop. Have an opportunity to see the Minoan ruins, um, visit the uh, Palace of Gnosis. Also many artifacts, explore a stunning mountain fringed plateaus, the windmill mills, the ancient villages. And again, again the, the influence of the Greek and Turkish uh, culture. Obviously next, as we move on to Italy, uh, we'll stop in Naples. Uh, from there, we can see the ruins of Pompeii, uh, Herculaneum, perhaps go to Sorrento and take a, um, uh, a, a hydrofoil over to Capri uh, or Ischia or some of the islands off of uh, Sorrento. And to Rome, where we'll uh, have an opportunity to obviously see the Colosseum, uh, the Roman Forum, St. Peter's Basilica, Michelangelo's Pieta, and many of the other things that uh, en encapsulate the visit to Rome. On to Florence, we'll see uh, the River Arno and the Rialto Bridge, or take a excursion to Pisa, Lucca, the, the uh, walled uh, town, Tuscany, San Gimignano, several different options to enjoy. Uh, whether you've been to Florence or not, you can have so many different options, perhaps see some other towns uh, from the port of Livorno. 
We'll also visit Monte Carlo. We'll have an opportunity to see the Grand Casino, kind of the centerpiece of the, of the Principality of Monaco, the Old Town, uh, perhaps uh, take a short excursion to Nice or Ez or Cannes or Grasse and some of these quaint little towns on the French Riviera. And finally, Provence, where we'll have an opportunity to see the old Marseille, uh, fishing uh, port of Cassis. And again, it's quite an interesting ex experience just to envision all these small towns before we come to Barcelona for disembarkation. This program's priced from 2699, including air from 28 major gateways. And again, you have a in, included in there is your option of shore excursions or a shipboard credit or a beverage package. Our next program is a domestic program, the Springtime Coasts of the South, departing April 14th to 25th for an Nandina Beach uh, round trip. Um, this program starts in Fernandina, goes to Brunswick, Savannah, Charleston, Beaufort, Jacksonville, West Palm Beach, Freeport, Bahamas, uh, and back to Fernandina Beach. We'll be sailing on the, the uh, Victory 2. Victory 2 is a um, 200 passenger, 100 stateroom uh, vessel. It's nicely appointed with, uh, this is a category B stateroom. There's a nice observation deck, an open, uh, open uh, dining room similar to Oceana where you have a, no set times you come in and, and be seated at your leisure during a different, a certain time period. Uh, it has a nice sun deck. It also has other venues where you can enjoy reading and snacks uh, here at the tavern or the grill, the upper grill, those windows open up. So this is a nice buffet. If you don't wanna have a sit down meal in, in, the, uh, in the dining room, you can come here for buffet for breakfast or uh, lunch. And we also have private functions there. After a one night stay in Jacksonville, we'll transfer Fernandina Beach and then on to uh, Charleston, South Carolina one of the oldest cities in South Carolina, visits Fort Sumter. You'll, you'll uh, see the fort where the first shot of the Civil War was, was uh, shot. Enjoy the restaurants uh, in the Harborside area. It's a very scenic and nice walking town. On to Brunswick, Georgia, with the old district and the National Register of Historic Places with beautiful architecture. On to Savannah, kind of the epitome of Southern culture one of the largest national historic landmark districts in the United States. See the antebellum uh, architecture and the moss laden trees. We're going to Beaufort, South Carolina, uh, Royal, Port Royal Island. Uh, and this is a, a nice little community where a lot of movies were shot on location, including the Big Chill and Forrest Gump. And um, it's quite a small town with a, with a, a, a big uh, reputation. We're on to West Palm Beach. We'll visit the Norton Museum, uh, visit the historic district for the shops and the restaurants. And finally, Fernandina Beach. We we'll enjoy the mangroves and sandy beaches for relaxation before returning, uh, actually the Freeport Bahamas before returning to Fernandina Beach for disembarkation, uh, which lies north of Amelia Island. Our next program is a Tapestry of Culture, which is a, a, a transit from Miami to San Francisco via the Panama Canal. It's an 18 night itinerary on regatta. Again, uh, we'll start in Miami. We'll go down to the Georgetown, Cartagena. We'll do a daylight transfer of the canal into Punta Arenas, Leon, Corinto, up the Mexican uh, Riviera, Cabo San Lake, Lucas, San Diego, and San Francisco. Obviously, the the uh, translating the canal is kind of a belt notcher. People really enjoy the uh, the history behind it. Uh, we'll start in Key West. Uh, we have an opportunity to visit the Truman Compound, perhaps Hemingway's house. Visit the marker that notes the southernmost point of the continental US, uh, all from the vessel. It's an easy walking experience. And for those of you who know, have been to Key West, it's always fun to just stroll the streets. 
on the Cartagena, we'll enjoy the uh, uh, Castillo de Felipe, it's a fort that uh, was one of the most important in the military uh, in Latin America. Uh, perhaps visit a Spanish galleon, a replica of a 17th century sailing ship for a cruise in the inner bay of Cartagena. Once we come to the canal, we'll have a full daylight transit of the canal. Uh, as, as you may or may not know, the canal, uh, once the vessel becomes, uh, enters the canal, it's taken over by the harbor master. And also we'll uh, you always have an historical narration uh, on the speaker system throughout the tenure of your transit through the canal. So you learn a lot of history um, about the canal. Um, I might add a great book to read is McCullough's Path Between the Seas, which is a, is a great uh, precursor to actually experiencing this. On to Punta Arenas, where we'll have an opportunity to uh, visit some spectacular rainforest canopies of Costa Rica, uh, the aerial tram, discover some unbelievable waterfalls, just the, the natural history and the wildlife in, in the coastal uh, part of uh, Costa Rica is unbelievable. Into Nicaragua, uh, we have an opportunity to, again to see some of the world's most beautiful beaches and stretches of white sand and clear blue water. El Salvador, which isn't very, very frequently uh, visited by cruise ships, gives an authentic look at life along the Pacific coast of Central America, deep sea fishing expeditions, uh, active volcanoes, Mayan ruins, coffee plantations. We'll also visit, uh, as I mentioned, the Mexican uh, Riviera, Cabo San Lucas, ending in San Francisco. Our next program is Radiant Alaska, departing July 19th through 29th, round trip Seattle. This program is priced from $32.99, including air. Uh, we'll visit, we'll start in Seattle, uh, visit Ketchikan, Juneau, Skagway, Hubbard Glacier, Huna, Sitka, Victoria, and back to Seattle. First stop will be Ketchikan with their noted totem poles, one of the chief attractions of Ketchikan. Uh, drop by the Southeast Alaska Discovery Center to learn a little bit about lo uh, local culture. We'll cruise the Inside Passage, including visits to Juneau, where we'll visit the Alaska State Museum and uh, see the Mendenhall Glacier, as well as Skagway, which uh, encourages you know, just walking through the town, you really get to feel for the old gold rush uh, back in the day, the gold rush town era. We'll visit Sitka, uh, where we'll see a little bit of the Russian influence and their, and their um, uh, when they settled in this area. We'll visit the Sheldon Jackson Museum, which exhibits some of Alaska's oldest native culture collections. And then we'll end in Victoria, British Columbia, site of the, the beautiful Bushcart Gardens and uh, uh, a quaint little island uh, right off Vancouver that's uh, has some of the top uh, uh, botanical gardens in the world. Our next domestic program is the Majestic Great Lakes, parting July 20th to 30th, Chicago to Toronto. This is a very popular program. We start with a one night hotel stay in Chicago, work our way up to Mackinac Island in the Sault Ste. Marie, Manitouan, Little Current, Detroit, Cleveland, Niagara Falls and Toronto. We've been, we begin with a hotel night uh, in Chicago and we'll disembark from the Navy Pier right downtown uh, Chicago. This is a nice way to, to leave the city. It's a really an interesting cruise out of the harbor um, because of American Queens, which, which owns Victory. They have rights because they run some of the, the charter boats out of uh, the Navy Pier. They have rights to that pier there. Typically, you'd be coming out of more of an industrial port. One of the highlights of the trip is actually one of your first stops is Mackinac Island, the motorless island uh, in the northeast section of Lake Michigan is uh, well known for its beautiful Grand Hotel Mackinac, uh, horse and carriage rides around the island. Uh, saltwater taffy, uh, the fudge, 
the flight kiting, flight um, kite flying, and it's just a, a, a neat way to, to feel an experience uh, that's very unique. As I mentioned, we'll visit Mantuan and Little Current. We'll learn a little bit about the Indian heritage in the Upper Peninsula of, of, Peninsula of Michigan before arriving in Detroit, where we'll visit the Henry Ford Museum. Henry Ford Museum, it's both an uh, open air and an interior museum that's very beautiful. It's got uh, some amazing uh, American history. Uh, here you can see actually a replica of an old Holiday Inn off to the right, uh, the White Castle has presidential limousines, I believe from Eisenhower to Clinton. It's really an interesting museum and covers a lot of the basic American history um, and so much there to see that it's really hard to see all at one time. We'll be going on to Cleveland, which has had a huge gentrification. Uh, we'll, we'll actually dock downtown, have an opportunity to visit the Rock and Roll Museum, the aquarium. We'll take a trolley to the Cleveland Museum of Art. We'll have an amazing Egyptian uh, collection. And uh, I think you'd really be surprised if you haven't been to Cleveland lately, how much of a, uh, the city has been built and regentrified. It's uh, just a uh, beautiful uh, experience uh, to cruise into the town and see some of these things in the, in the inner city. We're on to Niagara Falls. We'll, uh, before we're getting into uh, uh, Lake Ontario, we'll stop and visit the, uh, the falls. Uh, obviously, you take a little sightseeing boat there. You can see it from the Canadian side. And obviously, the falls are a, a, one of the wonders that uh, uh, pictures don't do at words. We'll, we'll actually take the Welland Canal through Port Colborne into Ontario, and we'll end in Toronto where we have an opportunity before you disembark, perhaps to visit the CN Tower, the Sky Dome, the hockey, uh, National Hockey Hall of Fame, and uh, the hundreds of uh, different culinary restaurants that the very diverse restaurant community in Toronto. Our next program is Great Pacific Northwest. This is a program that departs August 1 through 9th, 2021, Portland to uh, actually Portland, Vancouver, Washington to Clarkston, Washington. We begin with a hotel night in Vancouver, Washington. When you fly into Portland, it's about a 20 minute ride to Vancouver, Washington, where you'll stay in a, a hotel before we embark on the uh, Empress. We'll go up to Astoria at the mouth of the um, uh, Pacific uh, Ocean. And then we come back down to Stevenson, the Dalles, Richland, Clarkston, and we fly out of Spokane. Our, our vessel will be the American Empress, which is a uh, sister of the American Queen. The Empress is a, a 205 passenger vessel, um, paddle boat that cruises the Columbia River Gorge. The Empress has uh, its own set of motor coaches that travel with her up and down the river. And this is nice because you really have a, a, a commonality and the, you always will have the motor coaches there waiting for you and know the, the motor coach drivers and they, they operate what they call hop on hop off shore excursions. These are voted some of the top in North America every year. When you come to a town, there'll be different marquees throughout these, these river ports where the motor coaches will rotate. So you can visit and stay 20 minutes, you can stay 40 minutes, you can stay an hour, but it's really nice. And they come back to the vessel again so you can get off and, and uh, have lunch or whatever and then go back out. So the, um, what they call steam coaches are very popular and they also in this day and age will be very helpful when it comes to controlling the health and wellness uh, shoreside as well as on the vessel. As mentioned, we'll fly into Portland and we'll transfer to Astoria. Astoria is, um, uh, as I mentioned, at the, at the mouth of the Pacific uh, Ocean. It's one of the oldest cities west of the Rockies. And there's a lot of uh, Victorian homes there with a backdrop to the steep hillsides. And it also has been the location for many movies that you might have seen when it comes to some of the sites. Obviously the highlight uh, of, of cruising is seeing the, the different tributaries in the Columbia River Gorge. We'll stop in uh, uh, Stevenson, Washington, located on the Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area. 
We'll visit the observatory where you can see for miles. Uh, we'll visit the Dalles. It's a town right between Mount Hood and, and Mount Adams, considered the end of the Oregon Trail. And you'll see a modern National History Museum there highlighting the wildlife and the topography of the area. It's really very unique. We're on to Richland where we'll visit the Sacagawea State Park where Lewis and Clark and, the, and their uh, Indian guide camped in 1805 during their expedition. Uh, we'll visit Clarkston and the Hell's Canyon, considered North America's deepest river gorge. And then we'll transfer from Clarkston to fly out of Spokane. This program's priced from $39.99, and that includes the one hotel night in Vancouver, Washington, and the hop on hop off program, uh, shore excursions. Our next program is Prismatic Fall, Colors in Canada, New England, departing October 1st. This is a, a, a New England coast cruise, cruising from New York to Montreal, priced from $42.99, again, including air from 28 major gateways and your choice of shore excursions, a shipboard credit or beverage package. We'll begin in uh, New York, as I mentioned. We'll go on to Newport Beach. We'll visit the Gilded Aged Mansions of Newport, Rhode Island, such as Vanderbilt's opulent Marble House, on to Boston, we'll have an opportunity to visit the Freedom Trail, Paul Revere's house, the Old North Church, and many of the things that many of you have seen in Boston in the past. On to Portland, Maine. And then we start visiting the provinces of Canada, Sydney, Nova Scotia. We'll visit Cape Breton, see some 17th century architecture, Saguenay and Saguenay National Park, St. John, New Brunswick, Halifax and the Halifax Citadel before coming to Quebec City and the, the old French walled city dating back hundreds of years in the old town with the European character disembarking in Montreal. And lastly, we have our European cruise artifacts and antiquities, November 1st through the 12th, 2021. This program cruise, cruises from Rome to Istanbul, 12 days, 10 nights on Nautica. As I mentioned, the program starts uh, actually in Rome and uh, transfers to Istanbul. We start with uh, Naples, Pompeii, Sorrento, Capri. Have an opportunity to visit Sicily, Trapana, Sicily as well as Valletta, Malta, some island ports, before we go on to Montevassia, Heraclean, and Rhodes, Greece. Here we'll see kind of the Gibraltar of the east, see the Minoan ruins at Heraclean, uh, the archeological sites. Again, a visit to Ephesus, you know, Library of Celsus, that I mentioned before. And of course, the Blue Mosque in Istanbul. So this is very similar to the spring program uh, in the opposite direction. We really welcome you to join us in any of these programs. You can call us at the 866 number here, our dedicated number for USC, as well as visit our website uh, and your specific uh, programs under University of Southern California. And uh, we appreciate your participation. I'll turn it back over to Linda. Thank you, Mike. We are so excited to get going again and to travel with you. Um, we love having that easily accessible website to use and also that dedicated phone number for all of our guests. I just have a few questions um, that I was wondering about um, and I thought some of our guests may wonder. So if you don't mind, I'm just gonna ask you a few questions. Maybe I can have you join me back on the screen. Sure. That would be great. Um, you mentioned the size of the vessels that you use and you gave some passenger numbers. Can you just share some of the differences between those ships and some of the mega ships that were in the news at the start of the pandemic? Sure, I mean, in this day and age, Linda, um, you know, when we're talking about large cruise ships that usually entails ships 2000 passengers or larger. The largest ship Oceana employs is 1200 passengers. Um, 
And I actually think, and, and because we do have some of the highest square footage per passenger uh, um, public space and, and cabin space in the industry, it really will play well into the, this day of social distancing. Because uh, as you personally know, having been on these vessels, there's a lot of public space where you can sequester yourself. And there's a lot of activities we can do outside. We do a lot of group functions outside in, in, uh, in the way of private receptions and what have you on deck. Uh, there, there's a place called the sanctuary that's actually on deck, but undercover that we have, uh, we can accommodate up to 30, 40 people in a nice private reception that we do with, with our, our alumni all the time. So I think that in reference to what we've heard back in, in March, unfortunately, there's a perception out there of, of uh, what's, what cruising is. And usually that perception is made by people who've never cruised. Um, but those people who've cruised before exactly know know that you know cruising is as safe as any other venue it's just that unfortunately um, we had some PR issues at the very beginning in March and most of those dealt with much larger ships uh, that being said Oceania has always been very um, uh, uh, careful when it comes to health and self safety on their ships and uh, again the public space Square footage of public space per per passenger is some of the largest in the in the in the industry. Thus, people will, will naturally be able to spread out, and uh, obviously, where where need be, um, they'll be built into social distancing and in, in, in interior quarters. But uh, there's a lot of nice public space, indoor and out, that people can spread to, and and that's the nice thing about having these alternative restaurants uh, and dining venues. So everybody's spread out. You don't even feel like you're on a ship of a thousand passengers. So um, no, I think it's, uh, and again, those people who've cruised know this, but unfortunately those who haven't, uh, haven't had the experience. Yeah, my favorite place actually on board is having dinner in that place where you showed in the back of the ship where you can go out early in the morning or late in the evening for alfresco dining. That's always been our favorite. Terrace I've also house. been yeah. always felt really comfortable in Oceana. I was on board my most recent voyage actually last summer and they had had a norovirus episode before ours on the cruise before ours and the cleaning protocols already in place were just so incredible that no one on our voyage got sick so i'm really confident that they that they're going to be doing it right you're right um, and, and they're and they're, they're being trained every winter on the norovirus so they they're very diligent about it so uh, a lot of the things like touchless food service, they've always done. You, you don't serve yourself in any of the buffets. There's always staff there to serve you. You point to the food and they won't let you touch the food. You know, they'd serve you. So they've always been very good when it can't, comes to, you know, uh, uh, sanitation, health and wellness. And you can still eat as much as you want. They'll give you as much as you oh, want. Yeah. They serve it to you. <laughs> um, too much. Your, your much. onboard group events are so much fun. Typically, how many go next guests are on board a sailing of Oceana? Because you don't charter the whole ship. Correct. Good question. We occupy anywhere from a third to a quarter of the ship, depending on the on the group size. So, I mean, we've had group sizes as much as half of the ship. Um, we do these conference cruises. Uh, we did a Pac-12 conference cruise a couple of years back where... Um, you know, we've had, you know, almost, you know, 80% of the ship, but typically it's, you know, anywhere from, you know, 100 to 250 passengers, somewhere in there. And then obviously everything's prorated with our staff and everything else. So you have, um, everything's broken down by gr small group sizes. So the schools are broken down independently. So we treat each group separately within the group, the, the go next group. Um, what if an alumni wants to take one of your cruises that is not a USC sponsored event? Can they go with another group? So everybody who comes through Go Next has to be associated with an association. And obviously not all alum, you know, all alum couples graduated from the same university. So a lot of times you'll have couples, one's a, you know, the USC grad and the other's a Michigan grad or whatever. Um, so yeah, as long as they're associated with the university, they can they can join us, and obviously, if they're a spouse of somebody, they can join us. But uh, in essence, most universities accept alumni, family, and friends. Yeah, but I'm thinking if it's not a sponsored USC event, say I want to go to the Caribbean, yes. and USC is not sponsoring the trip, can I still go on one of your go next trips that's going there? 
Yes, you can. And okay. we have that a lot where, where people want to go, but they can't go the date that USC right. is sponsoring. So we, they actually sign up through USC still. USC gets the credit and then they go on that trip. And that's what we kind of call that an FIT. So they're a foreign independent traveler. Um, and it, it may be one that we're sponsoring or may not be. And if it's one that we're sponsoring, they're br brought into the, the Go Next family with all the rest of the alumni. And if not, they're still um, usually receive something from you acknowledging that you know, you're part of the USC group. Of course, all right. Well, that's great. Well, I don't see any other questions. So I just wanna say thank you, Mike, for joining us. Um, I'm so glad you were able to spend some time. You're in St. Louis and I know you're close to your weekend now. So thank you for being with us today. Just a couple hours have, closer than you, right? <laughs> you are a little closer than we are. Yes, you're a couple hours closer. Um, we always have great groups on our Go Next tours and we just love the program managers who are on board with the groups and everything always goes so smoothly. So thank you always for taking such good care of our groups. Yeah, we appreciate your, your partnership and the USC Trojan Travelers are well-traveled, good travelers. They kind of roll with the flow and we really enjoy, you know, uh, bringing your, your groups on our, on our vessels. And uh, thank you. We appreciate this. Uh, appreciate your patronage. And um, we're all looking forward to getting back to cruising again. And you know what? We're going to do it better in 2021 than ever before. That's right. So thank you again. And thank you to all of you who have joined us. Have a great day. And as always, fight on.